Hey everyone, welcome to the 11th day of my trip to run in Rajasthan. After giving Neenu my Himalayan for the 40,000 km service, I had a day's time to spend and roam around the city of Udaipur. First, I decided to visit the city palace. Now, I'm not much of a history buff and it was very expensive to hire a guide just for myself. So, whatever information I could gather from the signboards, I'll share it with you. The city palace was constructed in the 16th century by the rulers of the Mewa dynasty. A part of the city palace is converted into a hotel and the rest of it into a museum accessible to tourists. The entrance to the main door leads first into the armory. It showcases the various weapons used by the Mewa dynasty rulers. The collection of weapon ranges from shields, swords and daggers to guns given by the British when they signed the treaty in the 1800s. This was my favorite section of the palace, so I spent some time roaming around and admiring these exhibits. I followed the crowd to the next section and it led to the courtyard and the surrounding structures of the palace. This section showcases various exhibits related to the battle of Haldigatti. Guides explaining the battle of Haldigatti to a group of tourists was a common sight inside the palace. The courtyard looked like a beautiful garden right in the midst of the palace. The city palace overlooks the Lake Pichola and other palaces like the Lake Palace, Monsoon Palace and so on. The corridors of the courtyard exhibits many paintings depicting the important events in the Mewa dynasty. There were many rooms built very differently from each other but built for very specific purposes. The views of the Lake Pichola from the windows of this palace is simply breathtaking. I again followed the crowd through small corridors leading to different sections of the palace. Again, it had various rooms built for various purposes. This is a view of the beautiful city of Udaipur from the palace. This is a depiction of the sun god that the Maharaja used to worship. I followed the crowd to the next section, that is the Queen's Palace. The Queen's section of the palace was very different from the King's. It started with various kitchen exhibits. This section also had rooms for various purposes like sanitation, childcare, makeup, and recreation. These trunks stored the clothing required for the women folk of the palace. The Queen's Palace had its own armory showcasing the weapons and shields used by the Queen and her aides. 
The corridor's father led to a room of mirrors and then to another courtyard. The palace took around 400 years to complete its construction and these replicas showcases the palace in its various stages. I just shot the replica of the present stage of the palace because it looked the most beautiful. The corridors led to a hall showcasing the various idols used for worship during the time period. Then came another one of my favorite section, the musical instruments used by the musicians around the time period. Mostly includes the Indian classical instruments and then the western ones which was brought by the British to India. The corridors further led to a section showcasing the map of India and its kingdoms throughout the centuries. This section also showcases the colors and tools used by the artists to draw these maps. The corridors surrounding the courtyard showcase various palanquins, chariots and other modes of transportation used by the rulers. Each member of the royal family had their own palanquin and chariots. There was another section showcasing utensils, hookah, perfumes and other things used by the royal family. It's a gallery of photos and paintings of the various rulers of the Mayavar dynasty. By the time I finished roaming around the city palace, it was way past lunch time and I had to rush back to the service center to collect Nino, my Himalayan. Once the chores were done for the trip ahead, I went to catch the sunset at Lake Pichoda. The view of the lake palace from the banks of the Lake Pichoda was beautiful. Most of the lake palace is a hotel now and it's accessible only by boat for people who had prior reservations. Even though I miss the sunset, I spent some time roaming around the lakeside. The viewpoint gave a 360 view of the city of Udaipur and it was beautiful. Udaipur is a city I wish I had more time to explore and I wish I added more days to the itinerary. Nevertheless, I made myself a promise to come back here one day to explore more of what Udaipur has to offer. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. See you in the next one where I head to the blue city of Jodhpur.